Hello everybody and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson I'm going to talk about color matrix. Color matrix again is a bit tricky and abstract to learn but in fact it's quite useful. Um, so it's also going to require a bit of practice but we have got quite a lot of practice exercises uh, where we will be using color matrix and you have a lot of opportunity to learn more about color matrix. So I'm going to draw a rectangle first of all and I'm going to fill it up with a gradient. So I've drawn this uh, gradient and I've duplicated it and I'm going to apply the filter to the top object and I'm going to leave the bottom object as is and in this way we will be able to see uh, the effect it has on the color more clearly. Let's go to the filter editor and add a new filter and add the effect color matrix. We see that we have a number of inputs. First of all type. The most complicated is matrix but after that we've got saturate, hue, rotate and luminance to alpha and these are quite easy to explain so I'm going to start with that. Saturate actually just removes the amount of color in the filter. Let's apply the filter and I see that it immediately turns to black and white. That's because I've got my value set to 0. But if I had the value set to 1, none of the color would be removed. And if I set it to somewhere in between, then some of the color is removed. So in other words, the colors become less and less bright as I decrease this value. And when it's 0, it's completely black and white. The second type is hue rotate. Let's go back to our fill and stroke dialog and click on uh, flat color. And here we have HSL. Recall that H is short for hue, S is short for saturation, and L is short for lightness. What uh, hue rotate does is it shifts up the amount of hue. So if I increase my hue by 10, I rotate by 10, then instead of 85 it will be 95 which is a bit more blue. Or 105 which is even more light blue, etc. The more I rotate it, the color changes according to this top bar. So I'm going to go back to gradient and I'm going to go to my filter editor and as I see one second I'm just going to move this gradient line back here so that it we have the same as the lower picture. It moved as I was changing one of these types. Mm. And so let's put it like this. This is more accurate. Now I go to hue rotate and I change the value and you see that as I change the value the hue shifts to the right. 360 degrees it's back where it started. Then we've got luminance to alpha. If I go back to my fill and stroke dialog and go to flat color. I see that uh, we've got L, lightness I called it. Another word for lightness is luminance. So the luminance to alpha filter goes through the picture and we see uh, the lightness is 128 and then it's converted to an alpha of 128. In other words, the lighter it is, the more opaque it is, and the darker it is, the more transparent it becomes. 
So here, uh, let's go, let's put back our gradient. And we see, in fact, that luminance to alpha has taken the lightest part and transfer and converted it to opaque and the darkest parts here to the right and the left has it has become transparent the light has become opaque and the dark has become transparent next let's talk about matrix I've created this small presentation in order to explain how the color matrix works. Basically, the color matrix can be interpreted as a table like this. Remember that from the previous lesson that a matrix is just a series of numbers arranged in rows and columns. we've got our input on the top and our output here on the left and what these numbers mean what each rows means is the new red will be recalculated using a combination of the original values according to the numbers in the first row and the new green will be calculated as a combination of these values according to the numbers in the second row. The same for blue, recalculated according to the numbers in the third row, and the new level of opacity will be recalculated according to the numbers in the fourth row. So for example, uh, if I apply this filter, I would take the original amount of red and multiply it by one, and then I would take the original amount of green and multiply it by zero, in this case uh, zero. I would take the original amount of blue and multiply it by the number here, in this case zero, etc, etc, etc. And then I will add them all up and I will get the new red. The new green is defined by, in this case, the old green. And all the other colors are multiplied by zero and I add them all up and I do the same with blue. The new blue is the old blue and the new level of transparency is the amount of red multiplied by zero the, plus the amount of green multiplied by zero plus the amount of blue multiplied by zero plus the amount of transparency in the old one plus a constant. Uh, so in other words this is an identity matrix. The picture remains exactly the same as it was before. The red is mapped to red, the green is mapped to green, the blue is mapped to blue and the alpha is mapped to alpha. Now for example what do you think a matrix like this would do? Pause the video if you want to think about it. The solution is coming up now. So in this example, all the red is removed. If I imaginarily shift these, num these uh, red, green, blue and alpha down, I see zero multiplied by red plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero is equal to zero. There will be no red in the output image. The new green is made up of zero of the original red, one times the original green, zero, zero, zero. So it's zero plus green plus zero plus zero plus zero. The new blue is zero plus zero plus the old blue plus zero plus zero. And the new alpha is 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus the old alpha plus 0. As a second exercise, let's see, can you imagine how, what kind of matrix we have to uh, define if we want to convert all the red to, all the green to red, all the blue to green and all the red to blue? 
pause the video the solution is coming up this is the solution we want our new red to uh, we want the green to become red so our new red is equal to zero plus the original amount of green plus zero plus zero plus zero and then we want the new uh, green to be the old red the blue becomes green zero zero plus blue plus zero plus zero and we want the new blue to be made up of the red in other words we want all the red to become blue then we have a one multiplied by red plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero is blue let's try one or two examples in Inkscape let's recreate the examples we just talked about the first was to remove the amount of red let's go and press turn this one into a zero and here we see all the red has been taken out of the picture if we want to switch up the red green and blue values let's just put a one here and remove this and put a one here and then let's put a one here just like we did in the example and here I see that all the blue has become green all the green has become red and all the red has become blue thanks for watching i will see you in the next lesson bye bye